beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Tonight. There are three main levels of satanic influences and that also includes the levels of satanic influences over the saints. There is a dimension of satanic influence that cannot happen to you when you are in Christ. But there is a dimension of satanic influence that you can still be a victim of even though you are in Christ. Let's look at it very quickly. Number one, the first level of satanic influence and activity over mankind and creation is deception. Write it down. Deception. The first level of spiritual attack over anyone at all is deception. And this dimension can happen to both a believer and an unbeliever. It was Paul who was speaking um, um, which of the church now? help me it says galatia the church in galatia it says oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you he was talking to believers are we together the word bewitching there does not have to do with drinking blood and eating flesh to bewitch or witchcraft in this context means to cause a man to err using the tool of deception are we together so who has caused you to err by proposing a deceptive theology to you Let's look at a few scriptures very quickly. Second Peter chapter 2. We'll read verse 2, verse 12, and verse 13. If we can run through it very quickly. Second Peter chapter 2. We'll, look, we'll read verse 2, verse 12, and 13. Media, please help us. Second Peter chapter 2. And then we'll look at Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. The Bible says, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, deceptive ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. The Bible is talking of a kind of deception here. Are we together now? I don't want to go into other uh, more modern versions so that you see what pernicious there is. But just know that he's speaking within the context of deception here. Go to verse 12, please. 12 and then 13. It says, but this. Paul is really, I mean, Apostle Peter here is really angry. And he's using an expression that may even be considered offensive. He said, but this. As natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. Speak evil of the things that they understand not. Speak evil of the things that they understand not. He says, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. That means that believers have been made to be deceived by 
the arrogance of bringing argument upon a doctrine you do not understand. There are many people who would have been delivered, but because they sat down under a preacher who believes in himself, he's not being deceived, took them away from the life that would have blessed them. The Bible says they speak evil of the things that they do not understand. There is a level of deception where you take people away from the truth in an attempt to save them. Just because you do not understand the relevance of that body of truth to the church. And there are many of us men of God who are victims of this. There are many believers who would not have been in the kind of spiritual situations that they are in. Except that they sat down under our tutelage and under our mentorship. And we vented volumes of our ignorance to their minds. That derailed them from the path they were already following to liberty. They followed us away from their breakthrough. Let's look at the second. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Again media please help us very quickly. We are still looking at deception. Three verses here I found just to explain the different kinds of deception. This is talking about the great dragon. Revelation 12. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived how many? The whole world. So Satan, part of the system of establishing his dominion upon the earth and upon every territory is deception. He deceived the whole world. The Bible says he was cast into where? He was cast into where? Uh oh, earth, there's a problem. The deceiver that deceives the whole world was thrown out of heaven. Unfortunately, he landed here. What do you think will happen here on earth? Deception. So he comes to Eve and manipulates Eve, comes to Adam and says, Adam, come. Let me tell you something. Did God really say that A, B, C, D? And Adam said, well, he said, we may freely eat of the food. Eve said this and that and that. And then he said, no, there is something God is hiding from you. God is hiding this. I hope you know that Satan never, um, Satan never wanted, I used to think Satan wanted to replace God. No, no. Satan didn't want to replace God. He wanted to run a parallel government. I will be like, not I will be the most high. The, God, continue your throne. Sit there. I will also. I want to sit by your right hand. Now you understand what happened to man. Satan wanted to sit. Let's let's go. Since since the word Eloha, Elohim, it is plural. Add me to the Godhead. That's what he wanted. I am. I have done too much. I hope you know. I, I like. Oh dear. I don't want to go into the pre Adamite dispensation. But I hope you know. When you begin to read Jeremiah chapter 4, I, I don't want to go there, don't, don't, don't go there media, um, for time's sake. You, you realize that Satan was sent as a representative of the love of God to the then civilization and the then creation. What Jesus represents to our civilization was what Lucifer, the light bearer, the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom, he was sent. He didn't just deceive a third of the angels. Are you seeing how powerful his deception is? A third of the angels that are in heaven where God is, they fell for him. Talk more of you. And then he deceived the kings of the earth and he was thrown down to ashes. And the kings and the nations lamented. They say, you have become like one of us. Jeremiah chapter 4 when you read. You who brought the nations. The Bible says he weakened the nation. That was his sin. It was not just pride. There was something he made that made the nations weak. And now he has become like one of us. And he raised up a lamentation. Then you begin to compare with other scriptures. That's what led to the darkness that was in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The judgment that God declared upon that then civilization. Satan. The first occupant I told you of the garden of Eden was not Adam. It was Satan. Thou was in Eden. The garden of the Lord. So when Satan was watching God recreate the earth and then put men there, Satan said, Okay, God, finish and go. And let me come to the garden I'm used to. He knew where to, found, to find Eve. 
He never said, Eve, where are you? It's God that said, Adam, where are you? Satan always knows where to find them. I know where frail human beings can be found. Let me tell you, every man, even from Adam, was born with the tendency to sin. In iniquity, Jeremiah said, did my mother. He never said in sin. Remember, it's iniquity that produces sin. Iniquity is a state of the heart. The propensity to be vulnerable towards a thing. That's why he said, um, subdue, replenish. He used the word subdue. In other words, be careful. There is a stranger. I don't want to tell you his story. But don't be surprised if you find out you are not alone in this garden. And then Satan came. You think he came to Eve one day? No. He had been coming. Ah, Eve, so you are here today. He said, only stop me. God is coming in the cool of the day. He said, okay, let's talk Eve. Satan's deception is so powerful. Remain small. He would have gotten Jesus. Read your Bible. <laughs> Satan for you. When Satan took Jesus up the mountain, he tempted him on three things that, re that represent the dimensions for spiritual growth. The first dimension was your personal need. That's where the temptation started from. Jesus, you are hungry. Remember, part of the supplies of the powers of heaven is to help you satisfy your personal need. So Satan, I mean Jesus, don't watch stones like this where you are dying of hunger. The power of God is able to turn stones into bread. Do it. And Jesus said no. And Satan found out, okay, I see you are so obsessed with your assignment. You have left the realm of your individualism into kingdom. Next temptation. Let's talk about the issues now that concern the agenda of God. Why route it the hard way? All the kings that are in these systems, I deceive them and place them there. They are my boys. Bow to me. And let me just give you their heart. Instead of routing through the cross and all these things. Are you seeing Satan now? He left Jesus for a season. He said, I'm coming. Notice he never came directly to Jesus again. Satan for you. The next time we see Satan coming, he's coming to Peter. Remember, the goal is to Jesus. Then the next time we see him again, Judas. Then the next time in Jesus' weakness, he now comes and manipulates his mind. And Jesus for the first time says, Father, is it possible that you take this cup off me? And Jesus said, no. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Not my will. If Jesus prayed that prayer, the Father would have granted him. Yes. Because he always hears me. Jesus said it at the grave of Lazarus. I thank thee, Father, because you always hear me. I, ha I had to pray this in open so that they will know. I'm not my, my open prayer is not an act of unbelief. I'm saying it to minister to them. I thank thee because you always hear me. If Jesus stopped at that prayer, the Father would have said, well, I cannot be a demon to usurp your will. You have chosen to abort redemption. So let it be. And that would be it. He still will be the word. But there is no longer fruits of redemption. He will still remain till today as the firstborn of the begotten. But thank God he endured. And he has now become not just the only begotten. But the first begotten of the father. We being the proceeds of that salvation. And the Bible says that we have now been called into glory and virtue. Are we together? Deception. The third way deception can happen. Ephesians 5 verse 6. God, we have to run. We have to run. At least let's, let's just stop somewhere here and then we'll pray. Let no man deceive you with what? Help me. So the third instrument of deception is vain words. You can use words that may look very spiritual expressions theologies spiritual communications that because they are deep and because they are voluminous in context and play around with your mind they may be termed weighty just because of the nature of them the bible says let no man deceive you with vain words so who are the people that bring this kind of deception men satan uses men to bring vain words just because a thing is spiritual does not mean it is accurate. I can bring something and communicate what we call deep mysteries. And in the end of it, you are bamboozed 
by my theological dissertation but there is no substance in it to bring you victory we have to be careful let no man deceive you with vain words for because of this cometh the wrath of God on the children of disobedience the first level of satanic influence and hear me brothers and sisters for as long as you are in this earth you stand a chance to be deceived there must be a groundedness in the world that immunes you from deception the cure for deception among other things is to be sound in the word. Are we together now? That the word of God is able to establish you. The Bible declares that I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise. And then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So the word of God is able to give us wisdom. Wisdom. Number two. The second level of satanic influence is called manipulation and control manipulation and control the first realm the realm of deception thrives on the strength of your senses you may want to write that satan plays around with your senses and the fact that you are human and that you process things through your five senses it becomes his advantage number two is manipulation and control this happens in the realm of the mind this is where strongholds are this is where all kinds of thoughts that are captive, that keep men subject to the laws of Satan. Like we shared in Luke 22. Give us Luke 22 and verse 31. This was the encounter that Jesus had with Peter. Remember Luke 22. The Lord said to Simon, watch this. Simon, remember, was a disciple of Jesus. Although they had not experienced salvation in as much as we know, but the fact that they were in close touch with the word of God alone should create some system of immunity. Yet Satan penetrated all of that and came again through Simon, the chiefest of the apostles. Are we together? He was forbidding Jesus that Jesus should not talk about death. No, Jesus, don't talk about the cross and anything. And Jesus was said, oh Simon, you love me so much. You are such a kind man. Jesus looked at him and said, no, this is not kindness. This is, this is the devil wants to use. He's taking advantage. Now watch this. Are you seeing how manipulation and control happens? It takes advantage of an attribute within you that may even be godly. And Satan can buy into it to become what you... If you have compassion, Satan can use compassion to deceive you. If you have intelligence, Satan can use your intelligence and overthrow you. Here he takes advantage of Peter's compassion. Peter thought he was being sympathetic to Jesus. Jesus, you've done too much. Don't talk about death. Ah, I'm going to miss you. What does a good leader do? Oh, I, I, you guys are all wicked people. I'm talking of dying and none of you is crying. Peter, come. I love you. In fact, when, I, when, when as I'm going to heaven, you will receive my mantle for being this compassionate. Hear what Jesus says. Jesus looks at Peter with the tears running from his eyes and says, Get thee behind me. This is Jesus. Why didn't he look at the ground? Get, no, no, no. He looks at Peter. Get thee behind me. Simon, Simon. He said, Satan had desired to do what? Have you. That he may sift you as we next verse but I have prayed for you so what is one of the secrets that can help you overcome demonic manipulation is the ministry of prayer he said watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation because you can't judge it just by the seeing of the eye you need to sustain an intelligence and a capacity to discern between good and evil I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted. He said use this same formula. To strengthen your brethren. That means intercede for them too. Because Satan will come. Are you seeing why intercession is important. In a church for the saints. Paul was praying that. We, we pray. That, that um, um, prayers and supplications. Be offered for those in government. For this and that. That we may live a peaceable and a quiet life. 
if you don't pray, Satan will sway people. Manipulation, the realm of the mind. Now, this is where it looks as though believers are possessed. Are we together? Because you see, when you are... I, I don't want to go into deliverance proper now. That, that's for series 3. Are we together? But you notice, even here in Koinonia, and even you know, right now as I've been talking, you are seeing believers that you know love God. But in the pro they themselves are shocked. All of a sudden, they start crying and talking things and saying things, and you look at them. And you say, ah, but this person is a believer. Why is this person suddenly crying out and a spirit is leaving the person? The physical manifestation of deliverance from whatever level looks the same. It takes the eye of the spirit to know what is happening there. So be careful so you don't blackmail believers. And all of a sudden you see a Mecca now standing. And I touch his head and he's manifesting. I say, you see this guy? These, these, these are the snakes that are singing in, in Koinonia. No, no. That kind of talk is, is ignorance and arrogance and even stupidity sometimes. Don't blackmail believers just because of this. And again, we prophets and apostles, I think we must be one in Jesus' name. Because we are the ones who advocate this confusion. Just because you look and see a snake, you just stand up and the guy now gets up and he's angry. He knows he's not a snake. He knows he's not a fool. He loves God with all his heart. He is surprised that he was manifesting. And he's ashamed. And he, he goes back stigmatized by others who felt they didn't fall. So that means they are sound. Not knowing the acuteness of the problem that is sitting on your head. Are we together? God bless you. So the realm of the mind, manipulation and control. This is where Satan sways our thoughts. It is manipulation and control is so powerful. It will shock you to know that the greatest victims of this realm are believers. Not unbelievers. Unbelievers are so flexible. The sincerity of their heart doesn't even... It allows them to find truth. It is believers that are quick to look at men of God. Apostle Joshua Selman. How can a young man like that have crowd? Be careful, Lord, we are in the end times. And you will think you are being sincere. Are we together now? Manipulation. It is the devil that uses that realm to make somebody you love so much. He now uses his face to you in a dream. Watch this. Somebody that loves you and is praying for you, maybe your mother, now appears and you go and say, Apostle, prophet, I saw my mother with a knife and he said, I've been telling you for ages your mother is a witch. And all of a sudden you carry out and straight to your village. And your mother said, Oh my God, I don't tell me anything. So you are the one behind my pain. Manipulation. Both the counselor and the counseling, both of them are under the siege of manipulation and control. Are we together now? Very important. Satan can manipulate you. The moment he sees, that you are getting, you are praying over a challenge in your life, and he has seen that you have dedicated time to seek the Lord. He withdraws that challenge temporarily so that you will stop praying. You will take, you will take the withdrawal to be victory established. Then you will now say because he knows that you will never see God until there is trouble. So the moment there is a challenge and you set yourself to seek the Lord, you will see a temporary victory and say, Ah, that's it. The dream has stopped. And so you continue in that low level and think you are safe. Whereas he's waiting for a time where you go so down that he can strike you in a way that will matter. Is God giving us intelligence tonight? Manipulation. Do you know, brothers and sisters, I look at my own life. Let me be honest with you. I look at my own life. I look at my background. And brothers and sisters, I'm shocked at how well-meaning my life was. And how Satan prevailed over my mind with doctrines, with theories, with all kinds of things. It's amazing. Sometimes I sit down and I listen to men of God. Sometimes I attend conferences and I see people. And I see very well-meaning believers. But I am afraid. Sometimes even very anointed. I am surprised at how they are victims to the siege of manipulations. The very context of their doctrine 
will tell you that they are under manipulation. There are all kinds of manipulations. If I get up today, for instance, as a man of God, and I believe that every other church and every other ministry in Zaria is wasting God's time except me, that state is already a sign of progress in an attack. Are you getting what I'm saying? If I believe that I'm the most anointed man of God in Zaria, and that every other person, especially our fathers, our reverends here and there, they are just talkatives wasting God's time. The fact that I could accept that imagination, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? That I could conceive that vanity and agree in my heart and convince myself that that is the state is already a sign that I'm a victim of manipulation and control. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Dishonor to the body is a product of this kind of attack. Dishonor to constituted authority. We are all men of God. There's nothing you have that I don't have. It's a sign of this level of attack. Listen very carefully. The pride that comes with the result of spirituality is a product of this. You will not know. Oh, I come and I say, look, I've, I've fasted for 40 days. Mr. Man, how long do you fast? He says, well, I managed to do two. Like <laughs> this guy. Still, I pray that God will bring you up. Oh, I'm going to go and pray. And you think that just because you did that, it's a show of spirituality. It could be that the devil is already wasting such an energetic spiritual process that should bless you. But it's been corrupted by allowing him to prevail over your mind. Then on the other hand, you see people praying and fasting and you look at them and say, look, all you guys need. You see, you see wisdom is profitable to direct. This prayer, prayer is this all nonsense. You are just praying stupid. That stage too is another version of manipulation. Are you getting the point now? Yes. The fact that you use financial prosperity only as the chief proof of the word of God working for you is big deception. I'm repeating this thing again. I believe in prosperity. We've taught a lot on success systems. But learn this. I think the church of the Lord Jesus Christ needs to be weaned away from the deception that prosperity alone is proof that things are going on well in your life. In terms of financial abundance. No. Remember that the harlot upon the horse that mystery Babylon can enrich the kings of the earth. She's a merchant. She can make men rich. So just because I'm adding spiritual value to you and you sow into my life and then you come and see me taking tea and bread, you can mistake the availability of a lot of tea and bread to mean that just because I have tea and bread, my life is alright. It's impossible for me to be under any kind of siege. And I myself can be deceived. Because the moment I want to think about my life and at last cost one million lava. That means this thing is in place. If it was not in place, I mean, where did the devil stop it from the bank? Let's be very careful. A man's life does not constitute in the abundance of what he has. I'm not against abundance now. I hate poverty. We all do as a ministry. Are we together? But at the same time, we must be careful. There are many people whose lives are not alright. Just because they have a lot of money, they just turn and look at other poor. It's easy for a poor man to believe he's oppressed. Even if he's free, he will not agree. Because the whiplash of the, uh, what call, the economic tide that is swaying him left and right, even when he has been delivered, there is still something that is obvious and real and truthful. When someone does not eat, it's easy. That's why sociologists will tell us that religion is the opium of the masses. It's a system to motivate masses to keep them in bondage. Are we together? Manipulation and control. Number three. Find somewhere to stop here tonight. Is complete possession. That means complete possession. 
of your spirit, your soul, your body. The entirety of your tripartite nature can come under the subjection of darkness. This is called possession. The Bible shows us people who were under that kind of thing. Mark chapter 5. The madman in Gadara. Do you know why he was a madman? In fact, he was not even a madman. We only call him mad simply because of the context of our civilization. The goal of the demons was not to make him mad. They were just too many in one person. And so, his activity looked like that of somebody who is insane. The goal was not insanity. How could you have a legion of demons and be alright based on men's context of civilization? Imagine the war. This one is saying, cut this stone. And so he just remained. And notice how restful he was. The Bible says he would sit down in a cave quietly. They came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. It's a long reading. We'll find somewhere to stop. Verse 2. Let's continue. And when he was come out of the ship, listen carefully, immediately there met out of the tombs a man with what? You see that it was not a madman. It was just a man with too many unclean spirits. A man with an unclean spirit. Verse 3. Who had his dwellings among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. A man with flesh and blood yet metallic chains could not hold him. Because that he had often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Verse 5. Okay. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Now, you would think that worship is homage. No. This is Satan at work. Deception. Deception. Let me tell you this. When Satan knows you will overpower him, his next assignment becomes to agree with you so that he will conquer you. Remember in the book of Acts. These are the holy men of God. They have come to preach the glad tidings of the kingdom. So that the day Paul goes, will say, since we can't see Paul, we know that you are allies in ministry. And the deception will continue. Be careful when the devil starts fraternizing with you. It's a sign to allow that comfort to keep you there. So that you will be struck eventually. But when he saw Jesus, he ran and worshipped him. Verse 6. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God. Satan. Speaking through a man. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Eight. Oh dear. I'm sorry, Mark is not giving us the context I'm looking for. Anyway, we'll read to verse 9 and just stop there. One of the synoptics that talks about the legions, I thought that was where it would lead us. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Mark gave us an epistle of one spirit, but we know, I think, um... Ah, okay. Mark leaves it there too. And he asked him, What is thy name? Identify yourself. Now, there has been a debate about this. I don't, I'll talk about it next week. Talking to demons, talking back to you. We'll address it. Don't worry. Trust me. My name is Joshua Selman. Justice will be done adequately. Are we together now? And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is... Is that a name? My name is what? Legion. Suddenly, he now changes from I to we. We are many. Don't be deceived that only one person is speaking. We are many. Multiple spirits can exist within the same entity. Strange. So your human spirit is not the only one that can be in you. Another spirit. Many spirits. Legions. We are many. Verse 10. And he besought him much that he would not send them away from the country. This is another discussion. How can demons beg and say, Okay, apostle, cast us out of here, but let's not go outside of new extension. We have been in new extension for a long time. 
Look at the level of organization that the demonic kingdom have. They know that there is jurisdiction of their influence. And say, if you take us out of that jurisdiction, there is no basis for dominion. So leave us within our prescribed territory. We will leave the individual you are interested in, but leave the territory. This is a message that many of us need to learn. So it can leave you, but it's still around you. Waiting for a moment when you will grant access again. Jesus is the one teaching that when a demon leaves a man, so demons can leave men. Let it not surprise you that demons leave men. The Bible says it goes through arid regions. And not finding any place of habitation, it will tell itself, I will return back to my house. You are born again, he's still calling you his house. You see how tenacious Satan is? My house. And he comes and finds it swept, clean, but empty. Then it doesn't enter alone. It gathers seven greater than itself. Look at that system of coordination. Seven greater than itself. And returns and they comfortably stay in you. So that the end of that man is even worse. Don't miss the next part three of this. I will be teaching you why many supposed deliverance is incomplete. And I will be teaching you the imbalance of forever continuous deliverance. Why is it that you keep casting out the same demon forever? You know, because this is, I'm already going ahead of myself. I want to solve that problem. There are many well-meaning believers who teach that deliverance is an ongoing, continuous, and forever process. In a way they are right, and in a way they are wrong. When I teach you the dimensions of deliverance, we will see what deliverance is ongoing and what deliverance is wrong. The deliverance of transformation, because there is a dimension of deliverance called transformation. It is an ongoing process. Christ being the standard on, and the reference. So in that way, it is correct. But deliverance like a continual exorcism, casting away of spirit beings, the fact that they continue finding expression is a sign that what that person needs is not just to cast the demons away. Are you getting me now? All of that we are going to deal with next week. We have to find a place to tie it today. Levels of satanic influence. Number one, deception. We are just doing a recap. Number two, manipulation and control. Number three, complete possession. Look up please. Of all these three levels, the only one that the saints are by the default state of redemption immune from are we together is complete possession because he that is joined to Christ according to the authority of scripture is one spirit not two spirits living in one the same way a husband and a wife have become one are we together now you have become one it's a sharing together to understand that concept, you have to understand an old Jewish practice called salt covenant. The salt covenant was a way of binding um, union between two people or two neighboring countries. And they would use salt. Are we together? You would bring your salt, I will bring my salt. And we will pour it together in a vessel and mix it. The condition for us to close that covenant is if everyone can pick his own salt out. Are we together? So our redemption is in the similitude of that kind. Complete possession. By the authority of scripture, I do not believe that a believer can be completely possessed spirit, soul, and body. Although we generally call it possession simply because of the character of the manifestation. Are you getting where the error comes from now? So, like I said, if I pray, we're going to start praying shortly. And many of you, even as you are listening to me now, will find out that you start manifesting. And sometimes in the manifestation, you will say things and do things that many times can look like you are possessed. Are we together? And if you do not discern with understanding, you may even deceive yourself to think you are possessed. I've seen many people join the line after Koinonia. And then they ask me, Apostle, am I a witch? I say, what is the meaning of that? I say, please. I'm tired of everybody around saying I'm a witch. Even a witch, listen carefully, even a witch is not entirely possessed. Hmm. 
You see that? That thing we call witch and wizards. No. There are spirit entities that are not human. Listen very carefully. I hope you know that human beings are not the only species of beings on earth. We know that, right? That there are other species. Make reference to my message, the, the seed, I think the seed and the woman also, are seven days prayer and fasting. I did a little teaching on that. That there are human beings on earth that are not pure humans. The salvation is not for them. They cannot access the redemptive work of Jesus. Otherwise, probably the angels would have re repented. Salvation is not for angels. Salvation is not for any other beings. In fact, in fact, listen very carefully. The scope of salvation starts as, as far as the authority of Scripture reveals to us. Starts from the Adam, the man who originated our human civilization. If you were before Adam, there was another system. Are we together? It was not redemption through the blood of the eternal Son of God. Because when, according to Apostle Peter, when Jesus went to hell, the ones he preached to were not those who were at the pre-Adamites. We know that by those who resurrected with him. Are we together now? The Bible says prophets of old that resurrected and walked the streets of Jerusalem. Then having ascended to the Father as the firstborn of the begotten to finish the substitutionary sacrifice there, the atonement, he now came and they all went together. Are we together now? So we know that it is true that, that uh, Apostle Peter lets us know that Jesus preached the gospel to the departed saints in hell there because they were partakers. But if you were not of Adam, that's why Jesus is called the second Adam. So it starts from there. There are other beings on earth that cannot be partakers of salvation, but they are on earth. Satan has fraternized with them and he's still using them. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So you can find some of these entities. The fact that they are not of this earth does not mean that they cannot find expression in materials, material bodies. And then you will also see them manifest in material bodies. I'm not talking of entering a human being. They themselves as an entity sustaining a body that is material, but it's not a human being. Those are the kinds that we, that's the classic proof of wizardry. Are we together now? It's not just an individual who has been possessed. There is a dimension of that. But there are beings on earth that you see, they are humanoid in their context, but they are not human beings. They are not progenitors from, from Adam. Salvation, they can't receive salvation. It is this kind that the Bible says, spare not a witch to live. You will be blessed with a lot of balance. Um, if there's something, I, I want to reserve it here for three. Because as I just said that, many of you now are afraid. Okay, so if they don't leave, you are trying to say they die. So what does that mean? Because many of you have seen ministries, uh, respectfully great ministries like Mountain of Fire and all of that. Sometimes you see them say die. And then you are now saying, so what is it? And men of God have laughed in sarcasm to mean spirits don't die. We will find out how spirits die. Because spirits die. <laughs> The greatest strength of Satan, the one factor that makes Satan look powerful over lives, is one word, the flesh. Write it down. The flesh. Next, or next week or whenever is the next time we'll take it, we'll start from there. The flesh. I have to stop now. No matter what level of deliverance you go through, Every other agency of demonic activity is dependent on the strength of the flesh to walk. Meaning you are truly not free when you are still alive to the flesh. Are we together? Now, this is where the burden of laborious continual deliverance in, in futility comes from. And attempts to continue to cast out spirits, cast out spirits, cast out spirits. 
and then the saints or the individuals that are now delivered continue to remain and dwell in the domain of the flesh let me tell you when you dwell in the domain of the flesh you will get to a point where the spirits on their own can go without being casted out and come because the gateway a stronghold has been created by your affinity to the flesh and that's why sometimes they mock we men of god before you say in jesus name they have gone and the person is happy i say hey. to mean you are powerful and he's waiting he knows so people continue receiving temporary results temporary breakthrough temporary deliverance temporary this but there is a way that god can grant us grace to establish victory once and for all that you win today and win tomorrow you stand strong today and stand strong tomorrow then you now will not be the person in need of deliverance you will carry this dimension because you will now you will know you are delivered because you are a possessor it remains with you are we together so now you can turn to others and begin to communicate the dimension of the life and the power that God has brought to you. Are we blessed? Rise up on your feet. Rise up, please. You reign, you reign. Hello, King. You reign. You reign. Hallelujah. I know that 
I've not, I've not taught it the next time we're doing deliverance and I'll be teaching you on all of the elements. But one of the mysteries that produce true deliverance is the mystery of the blood. Are we together? It's one of the three witnesses. The Bible says, and there are three witnesses that bear, three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. It says that there are three witnesses. This is where the problem is, the earth. It says the Spirit, the water, and the blood. Are we together? The Bible guarantees us that the blood of Jesus speaketh. The blood of Jesus speaketh. That means you can cause the blood to advocate. The blood of Jesus is an advocate. There is the advocacy ministry of the blood. The same way Cain killed Abel. Abel the man had died. But Abel the blood was speaking. And he cried. And God himself had to say no something is happening. Although the man had died. But the blood is still speaking. I'd like you to engage the blood. And say in the name of Jesus. I declare that I'm a partaker of the ministry of the blood. I invoke the advocacy of the blood. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and speak. Over every pattern, over every curse, over every yoke. that lady please the bible says listen carefully just help those under the anointing something is happening here the bible says we have been called out of every tribe out of every tongue remember i'll be sharing with you every other power on earth cannot walk without the sun the sun and the moon are the two elements that power every activity that happens on the earth. That's why the psalmist said, the sun shall not smite you. The sun does not smite in itself. But I can take advantage of the sun. Every activity, demonically on earth, without the, when there was darkness upon the earth, there was no demonic activity. Until light returned, then Satan now returned with his activity too. When there was, all through the period of darkness, the only entity we see is the Spirit of God. We never hear of any demon jumping. The moment the sun was withdrawn and the moon was withdrawn, so the psalmist said, The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. We can thrive only with the sun. That's why Jesus himself is called the Son of Righteousness that can arise with healing. Thou shall not be he said the sun shall not smite you that means for as long as there is sun and there is moon i can do something on earth that will tap the power of the sun to fight you that will tap the power of the sun to spare you away 
Watch this. Hold on. Joseph goes to bed and has a dream. And here's his dream. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. And I saw 11 stars. Remember, all of them are light. They are just different kinds of light. Bowing to me. When Jacob had this, Jacob said, So, me. Jacob called himself the sun. So, I will bow. And my wife, who gets her glory from me, like the moon from the sun, and then your brothers, who are also stars, will bow to you. Jacob was worried. The sun bowing. The sun can bow. The moon can bow. Even the stars that have been sent to signify times and seasons can bow. What is this power that can make the sun bow? By next week I will share with you how God delivered me. You know I have been telling you what I went through but I have not shared with you how I came out. This is what I want to share with you. Kai. Look let me tell you you don't know victory till you understand the mysteries of the spirit. You will smash the gates of darkness. He said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. That you will walk through the enemy's camp and take your possession and lift it like this and turn to Satan and say, I dare you. I will show you a man who made the sun and the moon to obey him. I'm happy his name is called Joshua. Hi! <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Every time God wanted to bring redemption to men, he didn't just bless them. He did something to the sun and the moon. He realigned them to their advantage. Hezekiah was about to die. And when God turned his life, he said, at a time, I will do something to the sun and move it a particular degree so that the power that would have killed you, that has shifted the sun to that degree to allow it to kill you, will no longer be able to touch you. Joshua looked at the sun and said, Jericho, it's not an ordinary city. They are fortified because they have done something even with the sun and the moon. And he said, Son, there is war about to be fought. And because of that, stand still. It's not just because of light. Sun, stand still. Moon, hold your peace. And all of a sudden, Jericho suddenly became afraid. The diviners in Jericho said, this thing is not working again. They said, what happened? They said, someone has done something to the sun. Jericho was close and they were afraid. The, the nation of Israel were not fighting. They are, the, the Bible said they were close. None went out, none entered. They said, we're in trouble. The sun and the moon. You will see why Habalists do all kinds of things. And drop a mirror on the ground. And use a sun and or the sun and make stupid enchantment and we laugh and say, Oh, it doesn't matter. And all of a sudden, you will now see why the sun is categorized evil according to what the sun does and the night. There are arrows that fly only by day. The what empowers them is the sun. There is the destruction that wasted in noonday. Once it is twelve on the dot, that destruction can start. Please be interested in what I'm sharing. Because this ministry that you enjoy is standing on the wings of this ministry. There is what can subdue causes. Yes, it is the blood of Jesus. Yes, it is all of this. But the dynamics of that operation, brothers and sisters, the powers that hold Africa are powerful. Don't trivialize it. Jesus is above all. I don't in any way demean the power of God. If I did, I would not be standing here. If I did, this koinonia would not be standing here. If I'm faking what I tell you, I will not open my mouth to declare this. Because that means I won't be able to sleep this night too. Oh, 
can stand against the law. No one can. No one will. I know some of you have not been doing it. Don't do it as a ritual. But I want you to receive grace. To do it with understanding. Forget about what happens. Just do what I ask you to do. It doesn't matter whether, even if you are praying and a demon appears, don't worry. You are about to see a dimension of the wisdom and the power of God. Conquer the realm of the flesh. Are we together? We are going to receive grace to pray. But I want to pray for you right now. Please just help anyone under the anointing. Just two minutes and then we are done. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, I, my God, I'm seeing His call. Right now I declare every hold of darkness, even in this spirit, help them. Jesus, look at what is happening there. In the name of Jesus, you know my voice. I was once your victim. But tonight has come as one who has been given the keys of David by the message of God. I declare right now, in the name of Jesus, everyone here under the sound of my voice, who is under any kind of siege, right now be free in the name of Jesus. 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 Every family under any kind of siege that is mocking your Christian integrity and making God's word look like a lie. In the name of Jesus. Fire, I'm seeing fire. That's what I'm seeing from heaven. Sabokotos Kabariatata. Man Takoto Sekete. Ebrekete Loko Sobarita. Mabrakatos Karia. I'm praying for you in the spirit. Seketo Koto Samana. Eketalia Katabariakata. In the name of Jesus. I cause the plague of witchcraft. I cause the plague of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Every voice speaking against everyone's destiny. The Bible says blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. The Bible says he nailed it to the cross. I declare and I decree by the substitutionary sacrifice of the eternal begotten of the Father. I cut every power that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I reverse any ordinance in the spirit over every individual, over every family. I command a reversal now in the name of Jesus. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Let me pray for you. Everything that must enter your hand, the open doors that the blood of Christ release. Help them please. Everything you have seen in the realm of the spirit. God has shown you dreams that you are a possessor. 
God has shown you dreams, your children, your breakthrough, your lifting, your speed, your job, your marriage. In the name of Jesus, I release it to your hands now. Become a possessor. I release it to your hands now. Become a possessor. And I pray for you. The Bible says when you catch a thief, he won't just restore what he stole because he has wasted your time by stealing. Can I speak restoration? Let me tell you, there are many of us who have lost things. Some you have lost time. Masha Makata. Leko Tabata. Joshua said, Son, go back. Move. Go back. I prophesy to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I prophesy as one strength. In the name that is above all names. Everything the devil took away from you, I command a restoration now. I command a restoration now. Whatever you have lost in time, I speak to you. Between today and Friday coming, I pray that someone will have the faith to believe this prayer. May my God, the God of Jeshurun, arise and surprise you. Arise and surprise you. We call him Ebenezer, the helper of Israel. I declare, oh God, arise. Oh God, arise. The first thing the devil seeks to achieve is to destroy your confidence in God and the integrity of his word. Please never forget this. That every time the devil attempts to attack a believer, he is attempting to attack your confidence in God and the integrity of his word. What Satan is really attacking is the integrity of God's word. What Satan is attacking is your confidence in God. The Bible says to cast not away your confidence. Why? Because it has a great recompense of reward. Are we together? Your confidence in God. I don't know if I've shared it here, but I remember I was in Joss for a meeting when I met a gentleman who was talking to me about his dad and he told me his dad was once a reverend in one of these great denominations around and having been frustrated repeatedly in the field the man not only turned away from God he made up his mind that he was going to move to another faith entirely he was so frustrated no school fees for his children no meaning for his life nothing seemed to work and he said look i've served this god i've preached about this god but i'm going to have to stop lying to myself it does not work 
you will think that you may never get to a point where you can consider this let me tell you something life has a way of pushing a man a family an individual to a point where you will doubt the reality of God was it not John the Baptist under pressure who said go and ask him if he's the Messiah or should we expect another for John to be thinking of another as the person who ordained Jesus he should tell you what situations and circumstances can do are we together so your confidence in God and the integrity of his word. Number two, the goal of every attack is to introduce the spirit of fear. This subject of fear is very, very, very important. You will be amazed at how many believers have been utterly destroyed because they became the victims of fear the bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion there is a reason why he says that fear is terrible it's a destructive spirit every other spirit stands in the line waiting for fear to open the door no other spirit can open any door that fear does not open failure waits for fear to open the door death waits for fear to open the door discouragement waits for fear all the spirits line up with the potentials of the havoc they can wreck but then they wait for fear a man who conquers fear has conquered many spirits automatically the bible says and to deliver them who through fear the fear of death now have all their lifetime been subject to bondage praise the Lord. fear Believers live in fear, fear of the unknown, fear of this and that and that and that. Today you see young people, even teenagers, having high blood pressure. This is something that a teenager should have no business with ordinarily. But fear, fear, fear of the future. How will tomorrow be? How will this happen? How will that happen? And that fear creates a lot of worry. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus took out time to teach and explain again and again on the fruitlessness of worry. He said, which of you by worrying can add even a cubit to his hair? He said, consider the lilies of the valley. Consider the birds of the air. They break a fundamental law of sowing and reaping. Yet your father, your heavenly father, is benevolent enough to make sure they are not hungry. Please listen very carefully. Sooner or later in your Christian experience, hell will be interested in you. I guarantee you. Except you do not love the Lord and you do not keep growing. A time will come when the impact that you continue to make will attract the attention of hell. Who is this young man who wants to rise and do what has never been done in this family? For as long as you remain down, that's all right. But then you, you it's, like a, it's like a spiritual thermometer. There is a level when you rise to, you attract the attention of hell. And they say, what is going on here? If we allow this young Moses, he can tomorrow be the deliverer. Do not take the baby for granted. Kill him while he's a baby. Don't allow him to grow. The potentials of his growth can be dangerous. And so discouragement comes. Discouragement. So many believers, listen. So many families have had, especially in this time that we live in, their faith shaken, discouraged. Students are discouraged. Workers discouraged. Graduates discouraged pastors discouraged church members you know it looks like there is this air of discouragement and depression when you say praise the lord people cannot say hallelujah in their minds they say for what hallelujah comes from the word halal yeshua praise the one who saves that's what it means you say where is the salvation that i should praise him Talk to an average believer about God. He will prefer you talking about rapture than talking about the faithfulness of God. Don't mention that word faithful to him. Because he tells you, I don't know what you are talking about. That reality is foreign to my experience. I do not yet know God. 
as faithful. Faithful means keeping to your word. Faithful means justifying your integrity at all times. Please listen very carefully. So believers have been attacked here and there. And they think that the attack, listen, they think the attack is just on them just because they are Christians or just because the devil does not want them to have a job or have a child and so on and so forth. Listen, the devil is looking more than you. He's, he's trying to use you to make a statement to God that you are not faithful. So when you read scriptures like, since I was young, and now I am old. He says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. And you think of all your family members in light of this. He said, but this is a lie. This is not true. Foreign to my experience. And when the devil wants to make the statement stronger, he will handpick serious believers. He knows the impact. Listen, the discouragement of a serious believer has more impact than that of a believer that is not serious. Someone who is not serious with God, if he tells you things are not working, you tell him, what did you ever engage? I mean, we, we watched you in, in all that laziness, no prayer, no nothing. But when a brother who has been a prayer warrior serving in church, when a sister who has been serving faithfully in church, two years, three years, no child, four years, no child, then she now gets pregnant. And everybody begins to rejoice. Then at the fifth or sixth month, she will lose the baby in a way that can cause a problem. Listen carefully. That impact, another believer will now say, my God, what is this? If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, a time will come you will not see the need to continue again. There are many believers who are sitting down, but they've left God since. They are just coming to church because they know if you don't see him in church, you say, I didn't see you here yesterday. But the truth is that their hearts are not with God again. They, they are not yet bold enough to go to a harbalist. But you can be sure one leg is already coming out of the things of God. And that includes preachers. The frustration of fasting and praying for genuine spiritual power going around and emptying my accounts in need for impartation only to return back with nothing that shows I was called. When an aspect of your life has results and then another aspect does not have results, you can at least find consolation. Listen, but when every area of your life lacks result, it's a cause for concern. Usually it will not disturb you till other brethren start saying, but why is this so? An attack on your confidence in God you started your Christian experience loving God you made bold and audacious statements about God and while you made that statement hell kept quiet like they didn't hear you I will never leave the Lord no matter what happens I will stand for him I will stand by him it doesn't matter and now five years without a child and you don't have the courage to make the same statement you made 10 years ago. I will never give anybody bribe to get a job. Remember you said it. And now here is a job that can reward you. Only if you can fish out 150,000. You can pay it back in a month. Your integrity is at stake. You made a statement that you will never bribe. But jobs continue to pass you again and again until the day your loved ones look at you and say you are a foolish portrait of a believer. Watching you is a discouragement to me. At first you would think that it did not touch you until you sit later on and say, but God, are you not watching? And then heaven is silent. Are we together? When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. Please listen to me. When believers consistently do not get results, they are vulnerable. They are put in a position where the, the faithfulness of God seems to be an issue that, they, that is worth debating about.
Behind every attack is the desire to challenge your confidence in God. It's your desire to challenge the integrity of God's word. Hallelujah. I got a text this afternoon about um, a gentleman who killed himself or so. I, I heard the story that there was a gentleman who killed himself. And if I'm right, I was told that the gentleman's brother or relative also killed himself. Now imagine, please, ladies, imagine that you gave birth to children who killed themselves. Not that they died, not a car accident, not sickness. You left your child hugging your child in the morning and say, make sure I see you in the evening. And then you see people running somewhere and you join them thinking it's someone else's child. And there you see your child and the testimony is that he killed himself. Think of what society will do to you. Think of what other women will say about you. Say this woman must have been wicked. It means that you do all kinds of things. Sometimes it seems like death is better than living. This is why people have the courage to kill themselves. And if you ignore a man that killed himself and don't help other people, very soon an entire area will begin to kill themselves. It's a spirit, but I've taught you how spirits work. They don't come and work with nothing. There is a raw material. They use your frustration as a raw material. They use your depression as a raw material. They create a, they, they create a system around your frustration. And that becomes the entry and the access point to your life. But we have come tonight to call the devil a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ. It says, but I know whom I have believed. Hallelujah. And I am persuaded. Listen to me. It is important. I will continue to teach this here, Koinonia. It is important the depth of your spiritual foundation. Remember my teaching a few weeks ago? That the deeper and the more solid your foundation, the more unbending you will be in the face of unfavorable situation. There are people who have dug so deep, they have become like Paul. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What shall separate us from the love of God? And then he begins to list a lot of things. Shall persecution, shall famine, shall A, B, and C. Frustration. And then the spirit of fear. You look around and see fear all over people's eyes. Fear. Financial fear. Marital fear. Fear of children. Fear of raising children. It will be very irresponsible of any preacher and any man of God to ignore these truths, especially in light of the realities that are in our world today. When people begin to hang themselves, when people begin to run away in discouragement, go to the hospitals, go to the psychiatric wards, and see all kinds of people, young people, talking to themselves out of depression and frustration. Something is wrong. There has to be a people who will rise and say, Satan, you are a liar. Jesus is still on the throne and our, conviction, our convictions will not shake, we will not bend. Say, I reject fear. Say it again. Say, I reject fear. One more time, say, I reject fear. Fear is a spirit. Reject it. Open your mouth in one minute. I reject fear. You are a spirit. I may not know everything about tomorrow, but I know the one who holds tomorrow. Hallelujah. He holds tomorrow. I reject fear. I reject fear. I reject fear. Fear is a spirit and all spirits are received. Any spirit that is received can be rejected. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and of a sound mind. 
fear of excelling in ministry fear of marriage fear of children fear of the future of children fear of finances how can I tell if I will live to see tomorrow how can I tell if I will not die in a ghastly motor accident tonight Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. The believer who will never allow his confidence to be shaken and a believer who refuses to receive the spirit of fear, that is the believer that will weary Satan to victory. Literally. That you can weary the devil with your convictions. That regardless of what happens around you, you can stand in faith and say, my confidence, Lord, more than ever, I trust you. More than ever, I love you. More than ever, I will follow you as for me and my house. When a husband loses his job in one day, by the next month, the wife loses her job. By the third month, the child loses admission or something and three of them are seated with a Bible in the midst of them full of many promises. And then they do not know what to do. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. At that time, heaven is watching even as hell is also watching. Those who will not curse God because of their pain, if your pain will make you curse God, you are small. If your pain makes you curse God, you are weak. If your pain makes you curse God, your foundation is not deep enough. Are we together? Job's life kept being manipulated so that he will find offense in God. Even his wife said, look, Mr. Man, this is too bad. Curse God and die. Cause God and die. While I was still preparing this note this afternoon, one of our precious ladies in the worship team just sent me a text and said, they just told me my father has gone to be with the Lord. I'm sure she woke up this morning preparing with her colleagues to celebrate the faithfulness of God tonight only to receive a report in a year of extraordinary fruitfulness that your father has died are we together now yes there is a couple I don't know if they were able to make it here but I'll be very impressed if they made it the devil has attempted to challenge the husband and the wife again and again and again. And that man of God in his resilience, he said something that touched me one time while we were talking. He said, I will never be discouraged and I will never find fault in God. God is faithful. This is the language that moves heaven. That the devil says, can't you curse God? Are you blind? You still maintain your integrity and say God is alive. I got so many text messages from our young ones who wrote jam. Apostle, I've heard you change people's jam. This is what I got. This is what I want to get. Pray. And they send sometimes more than 10 times that text. I believe I will die believing God is a miracle worker. But the question is, what if it does not change? <laughs> you don't like this part of God. What if it does not change? What happens to you when your expectation does not come to pass? What happens when what you saw in your vision does not manifest physically? What happens when God tells you by much you are a millionaire and by much you don't even have a job? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, 
yet will I trust him. You are eating this bread because the journey is far. Man of God, what happens when you start ministry with a lot of zeal? Assurances from financial partners. Just start, we are here. We believe in your vision. We will stand by you to the end. Four months, they say we've tried. Don't come near us for that rent again. I confess to you, my brothers and my sisters, that life can be very trying. Life can be trying to the point that even Jesus would cry at Gethsemane and say, being in the flesh, I thought it would be easier. But now I've carried the burden of men. And even as the son of God, I confessed that men are trying. Surviving the betrayals and the pain. Surviving the nakedness and the shame. Now alone, praying in Gethsemane. Jesus wept, prayed till his tears became like drops of blood. Is God blessing you today? There is a reason behind the attack that has come, is currently on you, or is on the way coming. Let me tell you this. <laughs> there are many believers who convince themselves that they are not creating any trouble. It's the reason why they never get serious with God, because they hope that the devil will be busy attacking the Joshua Selmans who are causing trouble. Don't practice the foolishness of Esther. Mordecai told Esther that this plot is for all of us. It's just broken in faces. Phase one is for those outside the palace. But phase two will catch up with you. For as long as you have named the name of Christ, let me tell you, you have made yourself an arch enemy to Satan. And he will come. I assure you. Jesus is fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He's done fasting and the first personality he meets is Satan. And hear what the Bible says. He departed for a season. For a what? Season. That means I'm coming. I don't mean to scare you. But I'm opening you up to the reality of living. He's coming. It's not only God that is coming. Maranatha is not just for God alone. Satan too is coming. Satan just like faith cometh. Is it not in your Bible? The thief cometh. He doesn't have to be invited. The thief cometh. To every family he will come. To every ministry he will come. To every life. Please hear me. He will come. Oh, apostle, I've been enjoying my life. Everything has been wonderful. Keep going. Keep going. The world is not too large for his presence to reach. Satan is an expert in mobility. He testified his expertise in mobility before God. Where are you coming from? He said, from to and fro the earth. That's not a problem. I can voyage as many times as it will take to meet you. He will come. Let your finances begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your children begin to glorify God. He will come. Insult me today and thank me years later, but you must listen. Let your ministry begin to glorify God. He will come. Hmm. Let your life begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your home begin to glorify God. He will come. I think it was last week or so, I had the opportunity to counsel a couple. I could not believe when they told me the antecedents of their marriage and the level of, of love and passion and friendliness they had. I could not believe that a couple who were disbonded today would be looking for a divorce. I said, what, what was so bad that you want to go out? Man of God, I've said my own. We didn't come here to debate. It's a conclusion we have made. I said, take it easy. There has to be a way. Hmm. Life, ba. If you don't know God, one day you will sit down on the road 
and say before life kills me let me kill myself when you see people do foolish things don't think they were born foolish are we together when people go and buy this rat poison what they call it and add it to rice and turn it to eat and die they are not stupid people there is a way life can push you huh as a lady when a man has done your traditionals has done everything the invitation letter has come out and then he just looks at you and casually says i don't feel like doing it again because somebody told me you are a witch go and tell your father they can go with the dowry i'm gone at that point you would think you would smile and say oh no problem what is there god told you to live my life you, you will cry and not know what direction to turn to it is true that life can push you it is true that life can challenge you recently i had a conversation with a man that broke me i was going to pray for the man true story and the man looked at me and said apostle let me finish the story he said as i'm talking to you right now my beloved wife is in the mortuary i don't even have the money to go and bury her I'll not mention tribe, but he comes from a region where burial is not something that comes easy. And the man was just smiling. I said, your wife is dead. He said, yes, sir. Dead. My wife. I stood before everybody to exchange vows. We agreed to grow old together. Now she's gone. You think they didn't pray to raise that body back? The guy I'm talking to you is a born again and tongue talking Christian. What happens? You see, I've been to the mortuary many times, my brothers and sisters. As a man of God, you can imagine what happens when people die. I've been to the mortuary. They have closed me and left me with dead bodies in a mortuary alone. Why? Because they believe I'm anointed. And I believe I'm anointed. And I stood before a dead body that would not listen to me wake up in the name of Jesus and the body is looking hmm. there are times when life will act like that dead body hmm. there are times when your finances will act like that dead body there are times when your marriage can act like that dead body there are times when everything around your life can act like that. Please listen to me, believers. When you pray and nothing happens, and you pray again and nothing happens, and believers agree with you and nothing happens, you must know what to do. When the devil launches an attack, do you know what to do? Or do you just know that attack is real? Hallelujah. Years ago, I counseled one of our precious ladies. She's no longer here. And this lady told me that once a guy looks at her and says, I love you. I want to go and see your parents. That's the end of it. A strange being appears to her as usual. And that's the end of that relationship. If that guy does not get out of her life, the things that will get out of his life, you will not, his finances, just like Jonah, things will begin to leave. I can tell you that lady loves God and she's a Christian. Listen, if an unbeliever goes through certain things, it is natural. What happens when a Christian woman is barren? What happens when a Christian man is impotent? What happens when a Christian couple are broke? What happens when a Christian man and his wife and their children are standing in the name of the Lord and there is no roof for them that night? They don't know where they will spend the night. Yet Jesus is still Lord over their lives. Your confidence in God and the spirit of fear that comes upon you. 
a lecturer called me some months ago that he was relieved from his work not not abu here one of the institutions and i said what happened and just some issue that he he truly told me under god now it's not for me to vet the rightness but from as a man of god i can tell you i discern he was true some persons just cooked up one or two things like that and that was it the case had been pending 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 and finally they just threw that man away out no job and the man was telling me he said where do i start from there were monies they were supposed to give him nobody's talking about it and everything has gone i confess to you that life can be challenging i confess to you that when satan attacks you he looks powerful because the attack is real you will see it and sometimes you will wonder lord where were you when this came but tonight's message is for you let's look at a few scriptures hmm. john chapter 16 and verse 33 john 16 33 we are really going to pray tonight and when it's time to pray please hold even if it's prophetically the hands of your loved ones and everybody you know should be listening to this message and lift them before god as we cry john chapter 16 and verse 33 everyone read with me one to read jesus is speaking uh-huh these things i have spoken unto you what things that in me ye might find peace why in the world ye shall have tribulation listen listen jesus is speaking to believers and saying the possibility of tribulation is something that will be part of your experience that means acclimatize your mind do not think it strange when these things happen it says be of good cheer why because i have overcome the world second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17 second corinthians 4 and verse 17 listen to this message matured believers and run away from some of these childish things that continue to give us very aberrated views of life for our light affliction why will you use the word affliction for a christian one who is in christ one who has sustained victory the fullness of the spirit the fullness of the godhead in christ resides in him paul is speaking and says for our light affliction which is but for a moment he says walketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory for our light afflictions so it is not unusual for believers to go through afflictions nobody sits and prays for it but that is for any reason you find that reality around your circumference do not think it's strange rather be equipped with the understanding to deal with it to victory are we together now yes i will never forget years ago i was encouraging a gentleman generally just sharing with him i told him i pray for you to get a job but in case you don't get a job i was sharing with him certain business ideas and the guy almost shouted on my face i, I reject um you know that he rejected the statement i was saying that there will be delay in a job you know the bible says he will not i did, i said no no i'm a man of god i pray i'm not saying you will be delayed but i'm saying if this possibility happens while you wait for that blessing be thinking of this and that i don't mean to embarrass you but till today i'm not aware except if he got it this year but till today he has not gotten a job the same wisdom he would have listened to and his foolishness there is a difference between faith and foolishness they are not the same 
The same way a matured mother will be mentoring a young lady who is about to get married and get pregnant. And say, we do not, we, we are not discouraging you. But we are just saying that there might be these possibilities. And that if this comes, there is a wisdom way to route it. No, I reject it. I, my, my womb is blessed. Nobody's arguing it. Until life shows you pepper. And then you turn and say, ah, so this thing is like that. A man parked his car and ran to deal with somebody quickly and came out and met space. His car had gone. In the afternoon, broad daylight, the car that was dedicated in church, don't forget, don't forget, almost every church dedicates cars. This car was dedicated in the name of the Lord by a genuine man of God. Genuine oil was poured on it. And now a thief enters and the oil did not seem to do anything. The prophecy didn't seem to do anything. That guy kicked that car and ran away with it. And where were the angels that keep watch? Did the Bible not say that they will bear you up on their wings? What suddenly happened to that man who put a speaker, I am victorious, behind the car that was stolen? What happens when a believer is in church and armed robbers are in the house stealing? Have you not heard this? Or you don't say it in church. It should not be said, Abby. That you are worshipping God and rolling on the ground. Lord, I give you my heart. And an armed robber breaks your door. And the all-seeing eye of God does not seem to be able to restrain that robber. He enters your house and goes to look for the areas you just collected and carries it and runs away. You share the grace with joy and go back home into a week long of depression. I'm a man of faith. I'm a man that believes in miracles. But I must teach you the reality of navigating through these things in life. I don't mean to embarrass our precious lady, but one of our ladies here, I remember very clearly one time her mother, it was in a, it was in a night vigil. They were praying, not in a party not in a club a night vigil they were praying lifting up the name of the lord fiery prayer suddenly a woman stops drops dead and dies that's how the mother died i remember when that lady called me that night crying and saying apostle how can my mother die in the place of prayer it's the same thing like saying how can jesus die but he died how can life die? Life died. How can light be dark? Light became dark. Sometimes the unexplainable happens. Like life dying. Like resurrection being grounded on the cross. <laughs> James chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4. I like what this teaching is doing to you. You will thank me tomorrow. Add it to your spiritual arsenals so that you will draw it forth in the days that are rainy days. For some of you, the dark cloud is already before you. And you will need to know this. James, let's go to verse, um, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Why? Next verse. Knowing this, knowing this. Tell your neighbor, knowing this. There are things you need to know. Knowing this. This is your immunity. This is your basis for stability. Knowing this. There are things if you don't know, you cannot rejoice in the midst of pain. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith Walk at patience. Verse 4. It says, but let patience have her perfect work. 
Do you know what this means? Don't interrupt what is happening. Let patience have her perfect work that ye might be mature and complete, wanting or lacking nothing. Jesus told us very clearly that it's not unusual for believers to be challenged by the gates of hell. And then also, the Bible did not leave us in the dark that the journey of the believer is not just a smooth road. That there are mountains and there are valleys in the making of great men in God's kingdom. Listen very carefully. There is a place where the refiner's fire. I preached a controversial message years ago on the furnace of affliction. And several people said, don't mind that message. Just believe, you know, and so on and so forth. There is a real experience in a believer's making called the furnace of affliction. I repeat, there is a real experience in the making of men that are as precious as gold called the refiner's fire. It is not the destroyer's fire. It is the refiner's fire. Are we together? Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name. You are mine. Are we together? He says, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. He says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. There are times that God will not say, I will be with you. He will say, I will help you. But there are other times he says, I'm there. Just find comfort that I'm there. There's no guarantee that I will put my hand in that process. But be assured that my presence is there. <laughs> and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Now listen, he said when you walk through fire, you don't pass through fire, you walk. There is a roasting process that takes time. There is a separation. You don't put meat around fire and you have something nice. You drop it there, then turn it again. Then turn it back to where you turned before. Then turn it again. And when it is done, people enjoy it. Listen, what do you think the anointing is? Have you found out how oil is made? That the threshing floor is not a place of laughter. That oil does not want to go through that train. Believers, we have been spoon-fed into believing that all it takes is to get born again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be Apostle Joshua Selman. I want to be Benny Hinn. It is doable. It is achievable. But can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? That's what Jesus said. Whoever told you there is no cup to drink and whoever told you there is no baptism, there are times when your prayers will deliberately not be answered. This is not a conventional teaching. Many people say, God forbid, all prayers are answered. I agree. It depends on the level you are seeing from. Because the Bible says there is the heel of the Lord. It says, who shall ascend to the heel of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? There are planes in the spirit. And not every experience is the same at every plane. There are planes that are general experiences. And you can write a theology from that standpoint. But you climb like the eagle to a mountain where the Holy Ghost defeathers you. Have you seen how eagles mount up and renew their wings? They rise to a high altitude and right there by themselves, they, they remove the old feather and they are left naked in the cold. And they stand there and then suddenly new feather begins to come out slowly. There are things that the tempo has been preset. It will not be accelerated because of your tears. It was designed to be that slow. If the process hurries too much, you will not learn what you should learn. <laughs> hmm. That you are trusting God for money to eat. As soon as 10,000 came, God said, carry 1,000 tight. Carry 1,000 your own. Carry 8,000 my own. Go and sow. And you say, why did it come then? I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something to you that breaks the power of mammon in your life. 
Because what is coming to you, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It has not entered the heart of any man. So I need to train you. If 10,000 is difficult for you to receive, and you are shouting, I'm a millionaire. You are joking and flattering yourself. We continue to do these foolish things in church. That's why the world looks at us and says, these people, something is wrong with them. The faith life is not foolishness. People must be educated to understand the pathway. The way to the throne is the cross. You will never, there is no bypass. There is only one line. Man of God, hear me. You admire everyone who speaks under the influence of God's power. Fine. Let me tell you, when the anointing for service comes, it doesn't come as oil, it comes as olive. There is a breaking process that will turn that olive to the oil. It is true. There is a threshing floor in your life that is in the similitude of the threshing floor of Naboth. Where there are things that are threshed there. Unfortunately, it's not wheat, it is you. You are that living sacrifice that must lie there. Hear me. There are times that the things happening in your life can only be interpreted by those who have passed that road. No other believer can see and it can make sense. Now, God gives you a rule and says for the next five months, I meet with you from 11 to 3 every night, regardless of how tired you are. And some man of God will tell you, no, it's not in the word. God doesn't do that. Pray when you need to pray. God gave you a will. I agree. And the man is right. He is not wrong. But with respect to your training, violate that instruction and power will be far from you. Far from you. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path. That so many have left would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus we want to answer your listen the path to glory does not have laughter as part of the equation except you are laughing by the anointing he that sows in tears a farmer laughing by the farmer has not started farming. The size of the instrument alone will take away laughter. But you have to farm. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. There are many people who see every blessed man and just dishonor them. Ah, these young people, they just became rich. Please keep quiet. Find out the cross behind what you see. And then you will know that nobody was dashed well. You see young people with anointing, all these young boys, where did they get it from? Go and find out the pain. Find out what they were doing when you were sleeping. Find out the covenants that they, that they tied themselves with like a rope. All these people who have great ministry, be careful oh, you don't know where they are getting the crowds from. You are joking. You go and find out people's cries and covenants with God. I know a man of God who said when he went to Lagos for the first time, he slept under the bridge. He was not a poor man. God instructed him to give everything he had. He got to Lagos and slept under the bridge like a fool. Imagine if you were his relative and you saw him. He said, sorry, uncle, what are you doing here? He said, God sent me. Imagine that it was your daughter that kind of man married. Won't you carry your daughter back home? But today everybody celebrates him. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, do not think it unusual when you are following the path of champions. 
is a lonely road. Did you hear what I said? Do not think it unusual. I speak to you. There are many men and women of God here. You thought by now you will start a church. You are surprised you are still on, tra on training. There are others who are jumping classes and running around. Leave them home and stay quietly with God. Because there is a making. Huh. Making. Ask a coach how a champion is built. The coach will subject that person through exercises. The person will run. The person will cry. Coach, I am tired. And the coach will say, no, this is not you. The version of you I seek to produce is not the you I'm seeing. Sometimes when God pushes you, it's proof of his confidence in you. Others got there and God said, no, they've reached the elastic limit. But for you, he says, no, I know what I put in you. Let's push a little more. There are certain levels of glory that have been waiting for who will push to this level. Everybody stopped here. You can, don't, don't disappoint me. Push a little further. On one side, believers can be attacked. But on another side, without an attack, the default design of the pathway to glory requires like pilgrim's progress there are mountains to climb listen very carefully there are valleys to follow there are times you will sleep in the desert there are times you will not know where you are going you will just keep going and hope you are right We didn't come this far by luck. We didn't come this far by chance. It is true we came by grace, but grace that was not abused. It is not grace that did the work. Grace empowered us to comply. Behind every glory, are tears and blood sleepless nights and sacrifices as any great man champions hear me being a champion is not just a confession ask a pregnant woman when she gives birth to the baby like a dear one here who gave birth and we're all rejoicing but ask her how it was Right now, you are carrying something that others are not carrying. Don't expect them to understand you. If everybody around you understands you, it's a sign that you are not going anywhere. There are times only God can understand you. Let me tell you. There are times only God can understand you. While others are sleeping, the Holy Ghost takes away sleep from you. He giveth his beloved sleep. But from you, he took it so that you will wake up. And you are walking around your house and crying. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with me? He calls it refining. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with my life? Is this how useless my life is going to be? You have honored other people. Look at what you are doing. At least show me where I'm going. Let me be convinced that you are leading me. And he says, the seeming confusion is part of the process. So that I teach you that you don't have to understand me to follow me. There are times that it's in your obedience that understanding comes. Lord, if you don't show me where I'm going, I will not follow. You will never get to the place of destiny. There are times you start that journey far before it later makes sense. Come out of Ai of the Chaldeans to a land that I will show you. I don't give you no vision for it. Keep moving. Carry your child along because you will kill him sooner or later. These are messages you will not hear in the church again. It's not all about receive. It's not all about be a champion. The anointing does not work like that. There is stability. I show you the way of champions. I show you the way of the ancient. I show you the, the way to build stamina where you are given the keys of territories. To him that endures to the end that will give a crown and a white stone, he said. Please don't let anybody deceive you. If it is that cup, you must drink of it. 
If it's that baptism, you will be baptized. If it has not started, it will start. So I'm teaching you so that you will understand that when everything in your life looks strange and God says, empty your account. When you were a baby Christian, you emptied your account and in 24 hours times 10 came. So you took that mindset to rush and say, ah, if it's God, I know he's Jehovah Sharp Sharp. I agree, but not for your training. Sharp Sharp will be when you are on stage. Then you prophesy to someone and he gets a miracle alert. But I tell you, not during your training. You will get no miracle alert. What you will get is the faith to endure. I shared with you my story. Today I pray and people receive breakthroughs. I shared with you years ago. When out of hunger, I took a step of faith and joined a queue in First Bank, believing that miracle alert will come. This miracle alert thing didn't just start now. It was built in the spirit. So then death works in us that life will work in you. Whatever you die to is what you give life to people in. Let me tell you, this is how it works. You have never been disappointed forget about carrying the power of god no it's not for children you must taste of this cup called shame you must taste of this cup called embarrassment till your ego is drained like a transfusion from someone and the life that i now live it is no longer about if you are not healed i'm not a man of god no your ego is gone it went with the training you started the ministry with ego so every time you want to pray for the sick your reputation is there and he said young man you can't do ministry that way it is not about the result it is about my glory it is painful to be approved of god this is why you stand and run your mouth over people that God approved. You will be surprised what happens to you. It's true you are a believer, but you will know that everyone is not the same. Let no man trouble me, he said, for I bear in my body. I'm speaking to men and women inside and outside here. You are in these defining moments, and I must tell you what is happening in your life. Because if you are not careful, you will run around and meet people, and they will say, no, um, it's because you don't have faith. No, I show you the way of power. Let me tell you this. Listen. Listen. I don't claim to know everything about the faith life. I am just an effective member of the body. But I tell you this. When I teach people on how the anointing is made, and I teach people how men are made, it's an office. I don't teach you cunningly devised fables. I'm like a lecturer that has been teaching this for a long time. You ignore what I tell you is to your own peril. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled. The keys of nations will not be given to you just because you prayed. There is blood that must touch that altar. And not some. Everything. It must be drained till you are empty. Your tears will not stop him. Not even your fears. You get to a point where all your fears happen to you. And there's nothing else to fear. You have come out of the realm. Not by escapism. I'm afraid. One of the ways boldness is given to you. Is what you fear is brought before you. So that you no longer can fear. God shows you your fear right before you. You pray that he takes it away but you pass through it. And there's no longer fear. This is the making of men. This is the threshing floor of Naboth. This is how the great are made in this kingdom. Apostle, I'm called into the ministry of kingdom finance. I think all I need is just a seminar and some impartation. <laughs> you are joking. You are even the one who will need to die more than a preacher. Because mammon is a spirit that God even recognized. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Take him to a mountain. God, is this the price to be the father of nations? I'm not interested. 
What is that? I wait for a child for 25 years and you ask me to hand him over. Yes, sir. Take over. 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 I have come to the end of myself. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Listen, listen to me. I got to a point in my life where God so dealt with me, it was like there was no life again. That you get to a point where you don't know the name of your life or destiny again. No name. You are like Cain. And the more I kept moving like the wind, I didn't know that's how spiritual men are. Because it says the wind bloweth where it listeth. You cannot tell where it's going or where it's coming. So is one who is led by the Spirit of the Lord. I truly wanted the power of God in my life. And I prayed. I said, Lord, please give me power. I thought the answer would be a bed that would land on my head. And you say, Son, from this day, I have given you power. Power to open doors that no man can shut you are joking power to speak over nations no sir no sir no sir those keys are hidden in your scars you keep them there oh I apologize if you don't like what I'm teaching you tonight but this meeting is for the great because I see that season coming again it's like a cycle and a season comes when there is a new recruitment a new recruitment it's always like that and then the ones that are being recruited God starts working with them after some years he says now there is a, an opening again that can scare me that can scare me cause I know I'm dead already in my reason, in my seasons, I cry out, this is the end of me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen to me. Not every negative thing happening to you is demonic, is of the devil. N not every negative thing will answer to prayer. There are certain things where it is the grace of God that will be sufficient for you. There are times in my life I fasted and fasted. I didn't know the difference between being full and being empty. This is our generation. We, we truly have this honor. Truly have this honor. 
please don't just see every young man you are seeing and believe that just because they are young it means that they were given certain things as a dash no sir no sir no sir no sir there were nights when everyone will be sleeping I will be on the roof of vet medicine in ABU the roof of it in the night from night till morning in that roof seeing visions and revelations but staying there in that cold with mosquitoes just a little inconvenience and people begin to complain you are talking of giving some seed I never had the opportunity to spend my scholarship once once it was a sacrifice before it arrived so when today someone says apostle give me your phone let me send you money please there is a track record let's honor the pain of people let's honor the pain of people man of God the anointing is for the taking grace is for the taking the pride that we have just because of our one one or two two hours prayer I will never forget times when I would lock myself for three days my eyes will not see the Sun I don't know whether it's day or night I don't know whether it's nine o'clock or ten o'clock no sleep with these eyes open praying from morning till night morning till night morning till night Shaka -ta -ka -ta. lord expand this vessel expand this vessel let me be a, a conduit of your power that was a prayer not for myself Lord for your glory let it please you that I will be used as a vessel and one day God vowed a vow and said my son I give you my presence as a gift there is a threshing floor in the life of every believer please hear me I'm addressing those who have been attacked and those who are going through seasons they do not understand do not think that it is demonic please sit down and give me a few minutes and then we are going to pray tonight let me get back again to those who have been attacked and show you a few keys it applies to everybody but please write this down I remember praying years ago and I said Lord why is it that when I speak nothing happens I read the Bible and I saw in the life of Peter that while Peter yet spake these things the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him not all they that believed in him if your ears could hear Peter the Holy Ghost will come to you I said Lord why don't I see this in my life not for pride and God let me know that everything in the kingdom is yours for the taking but there are dimensions not all things are possible at every level there are real dimensions number one the first key that I will give you to minister comforts tonight overflow one I'm seeing lights all over overflow one this is what I'm seeing lights I'm seeing an impartation lights 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 just like like thunder like lightning light I believe it's an impartation just overflow one just caught my attention in the name of Jesus Christ that which God has in store let it come upon you in Jesus name number one the first key that you need to survive these seasons whether a season of attack or a season of pruning and dealing and refining number one 
never lose your joy please never lose your joy in this kingdom joy is strength never never lose your joy hmm. philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 please write quickly philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 rejoice in the lord always not always always as you go rejoice in the lord always and again i repeat rejoice joy joy is of the holy ghost oh. joy is not just clownish laughter you don't have to laugh to be in joy lord i don't know the name of what you are doing but i rejoice i rejoice i rejoice i rejoice i rejoice <laughs> I rejoice true joy will come in form of a melody on your lips a melody that does not make sense sometimes a melody that mocks your situation still sing it joy joy Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b popular scripture but many of you don't know where it is in the Bible Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b it says for the joy of the lord is your strength that the joy of the lord that means when you lack strength in this kingdom what you lack is joy in the physical world when you lack energy you are given food is that true in the realm of the spirit when you lack joy i mean when you lack strength what you are given to eat is joy sometimes God does not give you the solution he gives you joy 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 he said count it all joy count it all joy the shame yes sir the pain yes sir the no admission yes sir the disappointed meeting that I called people and I said sick people come and at the end nobody was healed and that you went back home and somebody sent a text and said next time be a serious man of God before you call us the Bible says, count it all joy it comes alive every time I hear your voice it comes alive every time I hear your voice there's a joy in my heart in spite of all the sorrows that surrounds me and this joy that I have only comes alive every time I hear your voice it comes, it comes alive every time I hear your voice. Can you watch your car on fire? Your 2.5 or 3.5 million, and you stand and say, To God be the glory, great things He has done. Can you watch your job and you stand at the gate of your office? It was once yours, but now no longer yours. And say in it, oh God, I give you glory. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Can you stand before a corpse and you are looking at a dead body that you fasted for days to come back to life? And you say, in spite of it, oh God, with the tears coming from my eyes, I still give you glory. I thought the dead body would come back to life. But now I have prayed. I give you glory. Never lose your joy. Let nothing in this life steal your joy. Not lack of money. Not lack of a child. Please listen to me. This gloominess we carry around is cheating us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Make up your mind to rejoice in the Lord. 
Why are you rejoicing and crying? I'm crying because of the reality of my pain. But I rejoice because joy brings harvest. You will sow in tears, but you will reap in joy, not with joy, in joy. If there is no joy, there is no harvest. Number two. What do you do in these seasons? Engage in strategic prayer. Listen, the seasons of attack in a believer's life or a season of pruning and making, they are seasons of deep spiritual emphasis. They are seasons of prayer and intercession. That's not the time to pray morning and evening. That's the time to pray anyhow and anytime. Because you are in a season, your anchor will be your prayer. Hallelujah. Day and night, you are praying. Lord, I don't know what is happening to my life, but I'm praying. You have your prayer time in the morning, you have your prayer time in the evening. But every time is prayer time. Every time is prayer time. An evil report, your wife just lost her child. What are you doing? I am praying. Why? I'm in a season. Is any man afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let him pray. Let him pray. Not let him discuss. Not let him grumble around. Not let him call God names and say I will backslide. Let him pray. Psalm 34, please, from verse 4 to 7, and then the last part, and we will pray. Psalm 34, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from what? All my fears. Next verse, we are reading to 4, to 7. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Six. The poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. And saved him out of how many? All his troubles. Last verse. The angel of the Lord. Encampeth around them that fear him. And delivereth them. Prayer is a powerful weapon. In all seasons. But especially this season. Lord, what is happening around my life? My wife just got attacked. My son just got attacked. My job just got attacked. I am not understanding what is happening. I set myself like Daniel onto prayer. God grants you grace. You can add with fasting. Add with fasting. This spiritual laziness of eating anyhow, anytime. Many believers now fast as a ceremony. Three days fasting, you carry it on your head as if, you, as if it's, it's 12 years fasting. If you love food more than your destiny, life will cheat you again and again. Food is okay, oh, but please let me tell you mighty ones, you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it. There are many of you here, you cannot remember, I may be wrong, I'm not saying you should do it. Please, I'm not saying you should do it. But as far as I'm concerned, there are spiritual levels that if you get to, a week should never pass that you did not fast. You are joking. You are joking. Not with what you are doing to hell. You are joking. Seven days. Ah, no. Himarama. 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 To the king who sits on the throne, Himarama. To the king, listen, let me tell you this 
I will continue to teach you this secret. Real victory. Real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep. Real victory is not gotten shouting around just making noise. Real men of power contact power when men sleep. May God give you the grace to rise above sleep. I'm praying from the... May God give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you. That God can wake you up in the night. No light. Off the light. You are praying. Don't allow distractions. You are praying the next thing. You see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract. Off the light. You can use your phone light. You are in the night alone. And watch what happens. You are nobody seeing what you are doing. But there is a register. Every day you are signing. It is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. You don't come on stage and talk nonsense. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Rose of this and that and that. God is not a scammer. He's not a magician. No track record in the secret place. You will flatter yourself to nothing in, it, in the open. Please learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Receive grace to dedicate night times and pray. God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. Shakatos kaprandas ke balakata. A time will come, you'll feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you are a liar. I'm going far. A time will come, your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. Tongues are languages. And there are levels of power contact. Groanings that cannot be uttered. You get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray. There are times that only one word, one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes. Pray it. You are receiving power. Prayer is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior. Don't joke with your destiny like that. Don't joke with your destiny like that. The Bible says to enter and shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret. You don't need to have a prayer point. You don't need to have a prayer point. Just stay there and begin to pray. Sekas kaparakatos, embrekete keleka takatos, sikos kamanakata. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. Listen, can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch 
my brother and my sister, if you pray from your heart, some things will shift. You will wake up in the morning and know I shifted this through prayer. There are attacks that only prayer can challenge. Pray for me, pray for me is wonderful. But you must become the priest of your destiny. Can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes? Salamakata. Senakandas kamahasabash. Ragata pakato sopakoto sheketelekata. Emprata seneketo shanikata. Tasete shanahas kabaratos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray. Pray. Outside, pray. Through the king who sits upon the white horse. Through the king, yes, he sits upon the white horse. Shela bakata rekotosia. Imarama. Marama, hey, hey, hey. Marama, to the king who sits on the throne. Marama, to the king who sits on the throne. Hey, Shena Balara. Woe to them who are ease in Zion. Woe to them who are ease in Zion. The king who sits upon the white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise you would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted... Use the same strategy to strengthen. Strengthen. Prayer is a strengthener. They 
they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Next verse. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity. Next verse. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. We are reading till the last verse. As for such as turn aside in their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace upon Joshua Selman. Prayer gives you stability. In the next two, three minutes, you are going to pray and say, Lord, let this prayer stabilize me. I shouldn't be shaking over everything. I should be able to laugh at certain storms and say, Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Stability, power, stamina. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Stability, O oh God. Stability, O oh God. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Your strength is small. Give me capacity, endurance, stamina. The grace to pass through for the sake of my family. The grace to pass through for the sake of my generation. The grace to pass through for the sake of my, my loved ones. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. Koinonia, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Don't entertain weakness. Be strong in the Lord. You are not the weak ones. You are strong. Hallelujah. The third key I will give you tonight. Number one, never lose your joy. Number two, engage in strategic prayer and intercession. Number three, prophesy. The power of the spoken word. There is no greater time in your life to engage the creative power of God's word than when things just go haywire. The power of the spoken word. The power of the spoken word. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers 14. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. There are times that you don't just pray. You pray till the spirit of prophecy comes on you. When it does come, you speak. He said, prophesy. Speak to the dry bones. Prophesy. Oh, dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord said prophesy there are times you need to prophesy there are times you need to speak psalms 138 and verse 8 very powerful scripture psalms 138 and verse 8 please give it to us quickly we're going to pray the lord will perfect that which concerned me 
Thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. Forsake not the works of my own hands. You lift it in prayer. I prophesy and I declare the Lord is perfecting everything concerning me. I declare that I come out victorious. The Bible declares that goodness and mercy follow me. You don't just cry and say, hey, yeah, so is this how my life is going to be? This is what I've become now. No, sir. Nothing moves till you prophesy. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You see, that's why it is important for a believer to be full of God's word. If you are scripture bankrupt, you will not know what to say. Prophecy is not just when God reveals something like word of knowledge. You can take the word of God and begin to create possibilities. It's important to know the word. It's important to know the word. When it looks like things around you are not working, you go to Psalm 3. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say, where is your God? He says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. It's unfortunate for believers who don't know the word. You must trust God for grace to sit down and gather relevant scriptures that address the issue of concern and stand up like the priest that you are. Put those words in the lips of faith like Kenyon would say and begin to release them with true supernatural power. The Lord is my light and salvation. The Lord is my light and salvation. I reject confusion in my life. I hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. This is how to pray. Is someone ready to pray? Listen to me. There are many of us who have gotten to the stage in our seasons where it is our prophecy that will bring the morning. If you don't prophesy, nothing will happen. Is someone ready to pray? If you don't know what to say, go and hold the hands of someone who knows what to say and agree with them. Lift your voice and begin to speak. There has to be a scripture that you know. It shall keep them in perfect peace. Whose minds are stayed towards him. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him from them all. From them all. From them all. And I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. It will give them beauty for ashes, joy for the spirit of mourning, that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord and he shall be glorified behold I do a new thing shall ye not know it I make a way even in the wilderness streams in the desert the Lord shall perfect all that concerns me all the days of my appointed time I wait till my change comes when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion they were like them that dream so said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things for us he said the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I am the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. I shall lay up gold as dust. Even the gold of offal. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings even to the brightness of my rising. 
for my shame I receive double. But my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, blessed in my going out, blessed in my coming in. Blessed is the work of my hands, my needing trough, in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. My seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. And my righteousness endures forever. Pray. Pray. You are not just speaking, you are creating. Declare thou that ye might test be justified. For by your words you are justified. And by your words you are condemned. You are bringing before God your strong reasons. Above only, above only, above only, above only, above only in the name of Jesus, above only above only a sign and a wonder a testament of the grace of god a testament of the favor of god a testament of the hand of god a testament of the mercy of god Though weeping endures for a night, joy comes with the morning. Prophesy joy in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 32, Genesis chapter 32, the Bible says, Jacob wrestled with God and he said, leave me for the day breaketh. He says, I will not let you go unless, listen, unless you bless me. Here's how God blessed him. What is your name? What is your identity? What have people known you with? I'm about to change it. That's how I bless you. If I blessed you truly, it means something they used to say about you. A proverb should no longer be heard. What is your name? And he said, Jacob, a cheat and a supplanter. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Why? For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. We are going to pray. Father, change my name. In this season, listen. Change my name means change my experience. Change my name means change the proverb. Let this proverb not be used about me again. That God cannot show him mercy. That God cannot lift my family. Let this proverb change. Like father, like son, no sir. Open your mouth and cry. Change my name, change my story. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Jabez, the mother called him Jabez, named him in sorrow. But Jabez was angry. He said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. 
enlarge my coast is someone praying Lord change my financial name change my ministerial name change my marital name change my destiny name out of the abundance of your mercy by the encounter I've had with you change my name change my story change my name give me a testimony shut the mouths of the wicked prove once again that you are God and that by yourself please pray God answers prayers give me a new name hallelujah hallelujah next prayer point the Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and it became twisted Lord may I never depend on my strength it says trust in the Lord with all your heart Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 and lean not on your own understanding it says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path the next verse says do not be wise in your own understanding but fear the Lord and turn away from evil you are going to pray Lord I've trusted my certificate I've trusted my connection I've trusted my beauty I've trusted my spirituality but tonight I take my eyes away from all of this as advantageous as they are they looked unto him and their faces were lightened I look to you and to you alone lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray we are praying I take my eyes away from man it is true that my blessings come through men but my eyes are fixed on you is someone praying We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Like the brazen serpent that Moses made, he said, whoever looks to that serpent, the real one will not strike at him. Vain is anything that you put your strength on. So Jacob, I see you stable without me. I touch your point of stability so that you will be ever dependent on me. The last prayer point. He said he blessed him and the sun arose until then it was night the war happened in the night the weeping happened in the night but then he says the sun arose and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel the face of God 
It says, for I have seen God face to face. When Moses saw the face of God, he returned back with a testimony. Is someone ready to pray? Lord, let the sun arise. It is true that weeping endures for a night, but I believe I'm standing at the dawn of my morning. Lift your voice and prophesy. Let my sun arise. Sun arise. Financial sun arise. Ministerial sun arise. The encounter is over. The lessons have been learned. The impartations have been received. Therefore, night time be turned today. Night time be turned today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep standing. We're rounding up. Let me tell you three things that come into your life when you break through with God. Number one, strange dimensions of favor. There is, a, there is a, an unusual degree of favor. It's God's signature. He writes it upon your life that the training for this phase has come to an end. You have been approved. He uses favor. Dimensions of doors you never dreamt opening. I can tell you this happens. It doesn't matter how the night is. That when your day breaks, you will see favor that will bring you to your knees. When I talk of favor, I'm not talking money. I'm talking of the hearts of kings and nobles. Money is very small. God will take the hearts of kings and nobles and give you. It will be like a charm. You will call on a man and nations will respond. You have become Beulah and Hephzibah. The delight. Number two. Genuine, authentic spiritual power. Genuine spiritual power. Not trial and error. Not like God will come. Not like God will move. Something solid upon you. Provable. Genuine spiritual power. You speak the purposes of God to men's lives. And you will shift lives overnight. Power. 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 Number three, the third thing that happens to you when you stand with God is that God multiplies both your spiritual and your physical influence. He increases the reach of the grace he has put upon your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every man is limited by the jurisdiction a portion for his grace to function there are men who can stand from anywhere and speak over nigeria it doesn't matter the grace given to them and the expansion they have attained unto in the spirit covers that sphere elijah stood in one place and spoke over an entire land there were times when jesus had to leave one land to enter another land to pray for a person what was the reward of the five, two, and one talent, greater territory, greater influence in the spirit. When kings conquered certain lands, they had increased territory. America is called America today because it's the unity of many states. One American state can be three times Nigeria. One state. Are we together now? Yes. Is why it's called United States of America. In Nigeria, you can pass through a state in 30 minutes. 
and there are times in the states you will fly for hours from one state to the other there is no state that is more than one hour 10 minutes my duguri to lagos is the farthest distance one hour 10 minutes exactly you are there but you will fly for hours that is the reason why whoever sits as the president of that territory must be respected by every devil whether they like it or not it is the reason why the american president is the number one president because there are many in one state is the destiny of many nations the per capita income of just one state will swallow up many african countries so when god expands your sphere dimensions where your grace would not reach now you can speak from one place and they can hear from home before you had to go home for them to hear but now god has expanded your influence and they say won't you come again you say no problem he has upgraded the grace for i am also a man under authority right from where i am i can say to one come and he cometh go and he goeth it's like a ranking in the spirit one of my old secondary school classmates my father got to meet with him recently and now he's a major in the army i think at the threshold of the next rank what's the next rank after after major lieutenant colonel yes i think soon that's what they are going to give him he used to be a fearful chicken like young guy i remember when they take us from joss to go to our school he would start crying even before we go out of joss i never cried once to leave home it was a delight and a pleasure to get out that guy was so girlish and feminine i wondered but that guy today is a major sometimes he would stand and do some things you know he could see a roach cockroach and you know how ladies would jump but today he can tell me kneel down hands up you civilian except for the fact that when i sent thee lackest thou anything can we spend two minutes to pray let's pray the prayer of jabez enlarge my territory please lift your voice and pray enlarge me oh god take away the spirit of smallness from my life it doesn't give you glory that i remain small not after an encounter with you not after seasons defining moments with you pray the prayer of jabez Oh, that thou wouldest bless me, that thou wouldest expand, enlarge my territory. Pray for Koinonia, pray for your business, Lord. Enlarge my territory. He said, Where we meet with you is too straight, let us move beyond the Jordan. Please pray God is hearing you you're not wasting your time it has been said no one rose beyond certain levels in your family but can you pray the prayer of Jabez expand my territory oh God I will go where the fathers have not gone I will eat the milk and the wine of Canaan. I will not die in the wilderness. He did not bring me from Egypt to leave me in the wilderness. There is a land that flows with milk and honey. hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord
I want to pray you don't have to come out but I want to pray specially for people in this place tonight you just sense in your life that there seems to be a fierce attack on your life this is not just a dealing with God this one you know is demonic it's like all hell breaking loose over you over your family over your spiritual life over whatever it is your business I want to pray for you and I want you to believe it is for this cause that the Lord says to not neglect the gathering of the brethren because it's an opportunity for a supply of his power even when your seasons come to the end there has to be a man he said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it I want to pray for such people suddenly your prayer life just went down you come fast from six to six by 11 you are almost collapsing you can't even breathe it's an attack as a man of God you found out that it looks like you open the Bible and your page is empty you are not seeing anything again every verse looks confusing every something is wrong strange attack on your church members are suddenly leaving everybody is suddenly hating you people you have labored to raise in the gospel are now turning against you it's an attack you used to prophesy correctly but now you just found out that you entered a season of nonsense everything you say is not correct word of knowledge not correct your prophecy not correct it's an attack it doesn't mean you are wrong it means the devil is attacking your credibility so that you will no longer be trusted finances you are a hard-working diligent person all of a sudden it looked like holes came in your pocket all doors just closed no destiny helper again even those who promise to help you it's as if something turned their backs against you it's an attack my brothers and my sisters you need to pray all of a sudden your children started becoming something else people you have labored and trained they now no longer listen to you you say a they say b you say keep quiet they tell you to keep quiet something is wrong strange devilish dreams nightmares you can't dare lie down on your bed to sleep here they come pressing you molesting you attacking you it will take the grace of god to struggle yourself to wake up it's an attack what of reports from home you are enjoying the glory of god just about to take a nice step they just call you they pay you some areas that you are trusting God to just use and buy a small land and you hear an attack that someone needs chemotherapy or, or whatever it is and they need to spend 35 to 100,000 every week and it is you they are depending on say devora say it again say devora I say devora because you don't do it everybody says you are a wicked young man who is allowing your father or mother to die and you pay 70 70 thousand in in five or six weeks your money is gone there are many ways believers can be attacked and i pray for you i don't know who is in that category but i believe the lord put this meeting tonight you don't have to kneel just believe believe Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you.
Father, you have anointed me for the sake of your people. And I bring before you, O oh God, the thousands of people in this place, thousands and millions others from around the world who are being fiercely attacked by the devil and his cohorts in an attempt to corrupt your testimony over their lives. I bring before you families that have been fiercely attacked, businesses fiercely attacked, destinies, marriages, spiritual lives, ministries, churches, and by that attack, your people have been discouraged. They have been exhausted and frustrated. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every spirit responsible for this attack by the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, we crush the works of darkness now. Yeah. Pay attention, I'm praying for you. I decree and declare that if this is as a result of territorial covenants, activities of ancestry that authorize darkness to launch attacks over lives, over churches, over ministries, over individuals, mysterious diseases that you had no part in i pray by the god of heaven tonight let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you i challenge suicidal spirits over this territory of zaria the spirits that cause young people to kill themselves and waste their lives in the name that is above all names we command that spirit is banished from this territory the spirit of discouragement the spirit of exhaustion in the name of jesus we declare be gone now and forever He says, the Lord shall deliver you from six things, yea, seven things. And one of it is the scourging tongues of men. The scourging tongues. Pronouncements work, my brothers and my sisters. Some of you acted in a way and manner that out of anger, some men of God opened their mouths under the influence of the grace God gave them. And they made utterances concerning your destiny. Like Elisha, some of you laughed at certain men of God. And they made utterances. And there are things devouring you you cannot explain. Listen. There are some of you, his parents. Maybe be, before you now started to be serious with God. You talk nonsense to parents. And they looked at you. And said may your children do the same thing for you you would think they were just joking the realm of the spirit is a legal realm believe it or not whether you believe it or not doesn't change that reality the scourging tongues like a scourge a scourge is a whip a cane that the, that the mouth of a man can become a whip over a man's destiny It takes people to speak also over your life. There are some of you, maybe you were in certain churches and you ran your mouth against men of God, laboring in the spirit, either because of their weaknesses, because of their mistakes. You opened your mouth. Some of you maybe even insulted them directly. And like Noah, they got up from their sleep and cursed you and said, a servant of servants shall you be. He said, God forbid it will not happen, but it's happening and you are seeing it. Yes, I remember a man 
who I think he said something against Bishop Oyedeko. And Bishop Oyedeko cursed him. And he, you know, laughed it over and believed it would not happen. And for the next few years of that man's life, things went down until he went for prayer. And a true prophet of God said, ah, I'm trying to bless you. And I'm seeing that that blessing is not coming. Something you have offended a man of God. He said to go and if you can't apologize to him. You may not have time to do all of that. But that prayers need to be offered. Otherwise you will be surprised how long that thing will remain on your head. There are things in your life that should not go wrong. Something is making it go wrong. Exactly what the blessing does is what a cause does in the negative. Hallelujah. The anointing is two-sided. It blesses and it judges. I want to pray for you. Because I believe that sometimes this our generation need the prayer of mercy. We have abused and insulted men of God. Some of us with the young revelations we have, we have insulted every father of faith. Call them all kinds of names. Insulted our reverence in the Orthodox churches, our priests in our Catholic churches, you know, Presbyterian churches, just because we are filled with the Holy Ghost. We laughed at them in sarcasm and made nonsense statements. And God had it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray again. The Bible declares that a curse causeless shall not stand. But the Bible also declares that your mercy overrides judgment. I stand, O oh God, by the privilege of your grace. And I stand in advocacy for your people. That in any way we have become victims of the scourging tongues of men. Let the mercy of God let the blood of jesus that speaks better things than the blood of abel tonight let it speak on behalf of our lives let it speak on behalf of our families let it speak on behalf of our businesses let it speak on behalf of our ministries in the mighty name of jesus christ therefore i decree and declare that any pronouncement on the life of anyone causing destruction by the blood of the eternal covenant from today let it be lifted from off your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ lastly let me pray for those who it is not an attack from the devil they are just seasons you are passing through that is refining you to be as gold Father, I pray you are not careful when it comes to making men. You have standards that cannot be bent. And Lord, some of these standards, we, we admit that in our humanity, they are hard. They are standards that will stretch us from every dimension. Therefore, Lord, for the sake of your people, listening following from around the world and even here who are passing through seasons of pruning and training and building let grace be supplied tonight let strength be supplied tonight let hope be supplied tonight i decree and declare like a faithful soldier you will pass through it and emerge as gold that out of this season of training will come great anointings, great ministries, great destinies. Let the character God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. Let the discipline God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. Let the spirituality God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. Let the endurance God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. In the name of Jesus Christ, stamina for you to endure the mockery of men. Stamina for you 
to endure the sacrifices you will have to make and i declare that at the end of it god will write his signature upon your life you will be a possessor of something divine and something powerful in the name of jesus lord we thank you for tonight's teaching that as simple as it came we place an anointing upon it let it minister to your people at the points and the seasons that they will need it in the name of jesus particularly to your precious people in this ministry in the name of jesus there will be testimonies of the wonder working power of this teaching we give you all the glory and all the praise in the name of jesus christ amen give jesus a big big hand clap. hallelujah praise the lord very quickly before i take the announcement few minutes i feel very fulfilled teaching what i taught tonight because it's in obedience to the holy spirit please listen all the overflows inside the main auditorium there are people here who are saying apostle I've been waiting for you to make an altar call because I cannot leave this place tonight without totally handing everything over to Jesus. There are people here and we need to honor that decision. You are outside, listen. You are inside, please. You are saying, man of God, I need Jesus and I need him fast. I need him now. Others, you are rededicating your life. Wherever you are, I hope the space will be enough. Please make your way quickly. Let's clap for them as they come. Be bold, stand up, and make your way to the front. There are people coming from outside. Please allow them to come and clear the way for them quickly. Are there people in here? God bless you. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. Nothing to be ashamed of. You're coming from outside. Please run. Come and stand right here. He's giving you a new beginning. Apostle, what if they see me? Don't mind them. You are standing before Jesus Christ. Please keep coming. Keep coming. I'm not sure if I'm born again. I'm not sure if I'm a child of God. I just like the things of God. Join them. Join them and let there be that assurance once and for all tonight. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Quickly, please. Young, old. We take the issue of salvation very, very seriously. Jesus said, ye must be born again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. If there are still people coming, please quickly, they can come and join. But I appreciate every one of you. It takes a lot of courage to come and stand here. And I salute you for making this decision. Let me request that you lift your right hand and pray passionately after me. Just repeat after me. But do this from the depth of your heart and with understanding. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. Tonight... I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that Jesus is my Lord is my Savior is my friend from today the grace to walk in victory is mine I declare that I'm a child of God from now and forever Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Thank you, Father, for these ones. You have brought them by your spirit. The Bible declares that as many as will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. Receive these ones and empower them to live victorious lives. Let tonight not be an emotional decision. Let it truly be a decision that will move them from one dimension of glory to another. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I salute you for this great decision. Praise the Lord. 
may I please request that you just walk down the aisle, just turn every one of you. There's a lady waving her hands. I would want you to please move this way in concert. They would lead you to a group of people who will talk to you very briefly on our behalf. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.